welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover canine osteoarthritis. It's a bit of a bigger topic. This will be broad recommendations, things to watch for, treatment options. Your own veterinary team will need to select what specific options are best for your individual dog. Those recommendations can vary based on the specific joint or joints affected, the specific contributing disease processes, if there are any, as well as the rest of your dog's medical history. So join me, you'll learn something today. Before we get started, I did cover common signs to watch for that indicate your dog is painful in a previous video. So if you are wanting a bit more information about acute versus chronic pain, that would be where to look for it. I'm just going to skip right over all of that information today. Osteoarthritis is a specific type of chronic pain. It's also important that we remember that pain in our dogs is very commonly under-recognized by people that live with the dog as well as the veterinary team that sees the dog for short periods of time at appointments. It's also often undertreated and osteoarthritis is an incredibly common reason for our dogs to experience chronic pain. According to the research that we have, 20% of dogs that are one year of age will have osteoarthritis pain. 80% of dogs will have osteoarthritis by the time they are eight years of age. So because osteoarthritis is such a common disease, it is an issue that is a quality of life and welfare concern. We also know if we start treatment interventions aggressively and early in the disease process, we can be much more successful and give many more years of quality of life that's good to our dogs, which is the goal for all of us. So what is osteoarthritis? Well, it is a painful and progressive disease disease that affects the joints and reduces the ability for those joints to function normally. We see cartilage degradation, inflammation in the joint. We also see effects to the soft tissues surrounding the affected joint, and we will have a decrease in joint fluid quality. And arthritis can be caused both by normal forces on abnormal joints. So think about a dog with poor conformation or a dog with hip dysplasia or elbow dysplasia, a dog with luxating patellas. If you have normal forces, just walking, trotting, some playing, etc., those normal forces on abnormal joints can cause arthritis. However, we can also cause arthritis with abnormal forces on normal joints. So in these situations, I think about working dogs, dogs who compete in agility, their joints might be perfectly normal, but there is a lot of abnormal forces and wear. For a lot of dogs, their arthritis will be caused by a combination of both of the above. So we tend to divide osteoarthritis into both primary and secondary. When we consider something to be primary osteoarthritis, that means that we don't know the underlying cause and it seems to be degeneration to the joints that is more commonly found in older dogs. This does not mean that age is a disease. It isn't. It just means that our older pets are more likely to have certain diseases, and so we need to be more aware of that and screening for diseases and for pain. Secondary osteoarthritis can be caused by things like trauma or OCD lesions or luxating patellas etc. Osteoarthritis has many things that influence it, its progression and its development. We need to consider genetics. There are many breeds of dogs that are more prone to osteoarthritis than others. Breeds that pop to mind as very commonly affected are Rottweiler, German Shepherd Dog, Labrador Retrievers, Bernese Mountain Dogs. I mean, large breed dogs in general are more likely to have osteoarthritis than small breed dogs, but it definitely can affect any dog of any size. Osteoarthritis is also influenced by lifestyle 
and whether or not the dog is overweight or obese. Lifestyle can contribute to those abnormal forces on the joint. Obesity also increases the forces that the joints are exposed to. However, developmental diseases are the most common cause for osteoarthritis. So that means things like hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, luxating patellas. People have a very common misconception that osteoarthritis pain is unavoidable and that it's just old age and that their dog is just slowing down. This is something we actively need to teach people is not true. We have so many interventions and management things that we can offer in order to give our dogs a good quality of life. When your dog is slowing down, it should trigger you to think, why is my dog not feeling as well as they used to? You will need to see your veterinarian to pursue the cause and then whatever it is, it needs to be treated. Our dogs don't just wake up in the morning and think, oh, I'm eight years old today, I should act this way. They don't have that perception. They act how they feel. So if your dog is slowing down, having weakness, not wanting to play as much, if they are more reactive to sounds, if they tend to be a bit more grouchy, and this is a change in their behavior, all of those symptoms are incredibly commonly linked with pain in our dogs. And so seeing your veterinarian and having diagnostics done to look for the cause of that pain is crucial and early and aggressive intervention always needs to be our goal in order to have the best outcome we can. We can grade arthritis from zero to four. Zero would be a patient that doesn't have any risk factors and also doesn't have any symptoms. So if you have a four-year-old dog that's not overweight, they're not working their pet dog, they don't have any limping or lameness or slowing down or behavior changes, we would consider that dog to be a zero. Stage one is a dog that doesn't have any clinical symptoms, but that does have a risk factor. The most common risk factor I see in pet dogs is that the dog is overweight or obese. And we'll discuss weight a little bit more in our treatment and management section of this video, but we also need to consider agility dogs, sporting dogs, working dogs, and dogs that are of the breeds that we know are more likely to develop osteoarthritis over time. Stage two is a dog that has mild and intermittent signs. So for this, I think of a dog that maybe has a bit of lameness, say after they play really hard with a friend or after they go for a long hike on the weekend. Stage three is when we have a dog that shows symptoms pretty consistently. So they have lameness all the time, although it, it can fluctuate in severity. That's very common to have worse days and better days. Stage four is when we have a severely affected dog. This dog will often have multiple joints that are quite painful and they will struggle to do things like their usual walks or stairs or getting up onto the bed or the couch. Those sorts of dogs are severely affected and their quality of life is suffering because of it. So after history taking, your veterinarian should do an orthopedic exam and this should include a gait assessment as well as a hands-on exam. After that, there may be imaging that's recommended. It's very important that we recognize arthritis often doesn't show up on our x-rays until it's pretty advanced and severe. So when we're seeing things like osteophytes or changes to the bone density, that arthritis formation in that joint is already pretty far along. So if we don't see anything on x-ray, that doesn't mean that there is no arthritis present. It just means that we might be catching it at an earlier stage in the disease process. We also need to remember that pain is individual and some dogs will be more painful with fewer things noted on their x-rays than others. So you can't say, oh, I don't see anything on x-ray, therefore my dog's not painful because that's not true at all. Depending on what is found on the x-ray, your veterinarian may refer you to an orthopedic specialist. They tend to be 
much better at doing very comprehensive orthopedic exams. They also might offer you advanced imaging. Sometimes we need a CT. We also might consider things like arthroscopy and sometimes MRI is also appropriate. Now not every patient is going to need these things but the reason why advanced imaging may be necessary and recommended is because of all of those contributing factors that might influence the osteoarthritis. This is why aggressive treatment for any sort of secondary disease process that causes osteoarthritis to form is very important, as well as to protect the dog from things that also worsen pain like muscle loss because they're not using the joint and their body as much. When you have a decrease in muscle mass surrounding joints and in the body of the dog as the whole, that does make the arthritis pain worse because the muscles help to stabilize the joints and when the joint is more stable it is less painful. We also will get more pain if the dog is compensating. So if their one stifle is painful because of that cruciate ligament then they will tend to weight bear more on the other side as well as more on the front limbs and that compensation will cause additional strain to the body. Prompt an aggressive intervention to make sure that your dog is offloading weight as little as possible and also just to slow down the progression of the osteoarthritis as much as we can. That is the current standard of care and that is what you should push for. I am going to put in the video description the other videos I've already done. I'm also going to put some other resources in there about canine arthritis. If you want to do more reading, I hope this video has been helpful to you and I would love to hear from you what you learned from today's video. If you have a future video topic suggestion, definitely comment that down below. I always love to get those suggestions and I put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now! You're sweet! Alright, go! <laughs> gim, gim, gim. Ah, 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 ah,